نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى ومن يطع الله ورسوله فأولئك مع الذين أنعم الله عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا It was coming into my heart that you know after the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the greatest fear sahaba radiyallahu anhum had is that the we need to stick to that routine and to that path which will allow us to meet with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam after that this was their greatest fear that's why you will see that after the demise of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam a lot of wealth came to sahaba dunya was the world was wide open for sahaba treasures from all four corners of the world came to them but it did not made a, a centimeter of change in the life of sahaba up till that that they became governors of the cities governors of the states but if you read their lives you will see that this governor he is met by umar radhiyallahu an umar radhiyallahu kan and he meets him to see after before becoming a governor and after becoming a governor what is the change in his life so he comes and he see he meets him and he says i want to see your house so he said so avil for me what you going to do with me looking at my house he said no i want to see it he said okay if that's the case then he starts to walk with him and keeps on walking keeps on walking until the whole city is finished <laughs> and he goes in the rural areas uh, uh, the the uh, you know outskirts of the city where he sees this small house small tent ki- kind of house and he and enters into it and he looks all over the place and he finds no furniture <laughs> This is who governor of the state. And then Umar radhiyallahu anhu inquired that what do you eat? So he he has this he has this place on the wall. He he raised his hand towards it and he picks up a bowl filled with water, salt water, and there was bread pieces into it. a governor his food is bread pieces dipped in water this was not i'm not telling you a name because this was not done by one sahabi all of them were like that all the companions were like that and why were why they were like that when you when they used to be asked why are you like why are you keeping this routine so they used to say this one thing Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam left us in this state we don't want to leave this state we want to meet him now my dear brothers and sisters up till this 1400th century this is what have what have been continued those who accompanied sahaba the lifestyle they adopted they st- they sticked with it because they don't want to they didn't want to leave their companion companionship in akhirat all of the pious our pious predecessors they had this fear all their lives that's why quran says the people of jannat are going to enter into jannat and their children also but the children are going to enter with their parents not just not just being children of them 
No, Quran says, وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعَدْهُمْ بِأَحْسَانٍ they adopted the same lifestyle. Those children who adopted the same lifestyle their father had, they will enter with them into Jannah. They will have the companionship. The Mushrikeen of Makkah, they used to think, we have a lot of wealth. We have a lot of, we have big family, great family. So we are more honored and we are going to get more, We even like, like the way Allah has granted us honor in this world, with this, Allah will grant us honor in Akhirat also. So Allah said, وَمَا أَمَّالُكُمْ وَلَا أُولَادُكُمْ بِالَّتِي تُقَرِّبُكُمْ عِنْدَنَا زُلْفَةً This is not the case. Your wealth and your family is not going to bring you close to us in the Day of Judgment. No. وَمَنْ يُطْعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Those who are going to adhere to Allah and His Rasul. Uh, those who are going to tie themselves with the rope of the obedience of Allah and His Rasul, they are going to be the companions of Allah. They are going to be companions of Rasul and Shahada and Salihin. So my dear brothers and sisters, why am I saying this? Is that because if you want to be with our pious predecessors, all of us has accompanied great great Masayikh in our life. All of us has pious predecessors. Our ancestors, they lived a life with a great routine. They sacrificed. They made sure that they offered each salah in masjid with jamaat, with, with, with takbirullah. So do you think we're going to accompany them just like that? Like, like the way we are living? No, no. We have to adopt the same lifestyle. So inshallah, to adopt that routine which will allow us to accompany our pious predecessors, the real easy opportunity is coming up. Ramadan. So if, if we will make this goal, okay, in this Ramadan, I want to fix my routine. I want to fix my lifestyle. It will be really easy to fix. But if I will just, if I will spend Ramadan just because everybody has to fast, that's why I, I also have to fast. Everybody has to offer tarawi. That's why I also have to offer tarawi. Everybody has to quit sinning. That's why I have to quit sinning too. Right. Or if I don't fast, or if I don't offer tarawi, if I don't quit sin, what my family will say? If I will spend Ramadan like that, like I have been spending all my life, nothing will change after Ramadan. As soon I will see the moon of Eid, I'm going to come back to my same routine hour that I had before Ramadan. You don't want to do that, my dear brothers and sisters. So, inshallah, set a goal that I want to be, I want to adopt that routine which will allow me to meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Sahaba Ikram Rizwanullah and all the pious predecessors of this. Subhanallah.